From Erie's own government access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... Well, John, guess who's back? Yeah, I am. I am back this week. I know we missed you last. Week. Personal business got in the way a little bit. Yeah, well, that's okay. Everything happens for a reason, you know. Yes. How are you, how are you doing? Doing good. Uh, we had a special guest last week from the Anna Shelter, and we had some good calls and talked about the shelter, and we uh, talked about uh, her experience out in Las Vegas. I don't know. She, uh, she was out there when that shooting went down, and we discussed. Uh, what that whole scenario and situation was like when uh, that shooting took place in, in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, see, they arrested the guy that sold the ammunition. Oh, did I did see something about that. I mean, it's, the times that we live in right now are the really scary times, Cass. It, it's kind of weird. Like, yesterday I had a great experience. It took me longer to get into a Erie Bayhawks basketball game yeah. than it did to fly out of Chicago. Yeah. As they're starting to, well, they have the, uh, the new monitor, the, uh, metal detectors and stuff going on down there. It was there easier now. getting into the White House than it was there. Was it? <laughs> I haven't been, I haven't been down to a game since they, I heard that, uh, for that one concert when they first installed them. Yeah. People were, it was freezing outside and. Well, we, we had to wait 15, 20 minutes at the basketball game. Only 2,000 people there. Yeah. Well, maybe, I'll give them a break, maybe 3,000. Yeah, I mean, it's gotten to the, the sad point where we have to. Well, they only kept half the, here's the, here's the thing, John. We spent all that money on a brand new arena. Yeah. It's got two doors, and they only opened up one, one door. One door. Yeah, they had, they have eight scanners. They only use four of them. Right. They have one guy at the, one guy going through purses. Right. What do you, why, what makes you think there wouldn't be a long line? I mean, what they should do is how they do it at the courthouse. Yeah. You know, where you walk underneath the thing and then, you know, usually belt buckles. Well, they do, but, but they make you, the, the process of going through women's purses is worse than, than going, I, I've been to, I've been to Cleveland, I've been to Chicago, been to Allentown, Roanoke, gone through numerous airports, gone through White House security, Honest to God, I said, you know, the, the kid was so slow. Right. And then he, he was digging in, a, digging like he's looking for his next lunch. Yeah. And and I'm going, it, it takes time. And you got people waiting outside. Right. Why is the other half not being used? Right. You know, and then, you know, your process is, it's not, okay, you got to go over there. Then you get back. And then even going through the line is a lot slower than a courthouse. Now, you'd think these guys would be trained by now. Right. But they're not, you know. I like I say, I went to the playoff game in Cleveland. Got in, got in way quicker. Yeah. It's like, you know, what what are we protecting? I'm surprised we don't have metal detectors here. Well, yeah, that may be coming. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Go ahead, caller. Okay. Do you want me to go towards the outside so you don't hear the delay? Yeah, or that would help. Okay. That would help. I I can't, I can't understand. I'm, I'm talking to Ken. That's okay. No, John. Go ahead. Go out in there. It's a lot better. Okay. So. um I listened to the, what you had to say in November of 2014 when you voted against approving the study to demolish the viaduct. And I, I need your help, Kaz. I'm really concerned about this week's city council agenda and that there's a motion on the agenda to award the contract and another motion on the agenda to approve the demolition. And they never even looked at in the study, what is the impact air pollution-wise of people having to walk on the connector? They never looked at that. And the information that the mayor is putting out about how much it would cost to save the viaduct, that isn't right. And I'm well, well, what makes you think that... What? I'm sorry, go ahead. It, now, we've had eight years to look at this. Numerous people have looked at it. Uh, people disagree on the numbers. How do we know which side is right, whether your side is right or our side is right? We can only go by the experts. As for the air control, they're well aware that 
the materials that are presently there that are being generated by the recycling places is hazardous to foot traffic. That they know. So, I mean, there's no disagreement there that, you know, if you look at it from that standpoint, the bridge should come down. But we've been at this for eight years. Uh, the CPR was told by myself five years ago when I that, you know, you, the clock was ticking. Uh, we're under we're under the gun not by – this is not the city. This is the state and federal government saying this is our contract. This is our timetable. Make up your mind, okay? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but from various sources, it would cost like $6 million to properly – Restore that bridge? Isn't that what the state? Well, you see, the, the point is, how do you want to, how, how do you, this is where the debate is. The bridge is in bad shape. Well, obviously. Okay, now Adam says no, but, and, you know, you've had numerous engineers say that structurally the bridge is bad. Right. Whether it's for foot traffic or not, you have to remember there's people and vehicles traveling underneath it too, to their businesses. Right. So it has to be made secure underneath also. Right. Who's going to maintain it? Uh, the city, when it was, when we had 138,000 people and we had a great tax base, we didn't take care of it. Right. There's no debate on that. Right. Not, you know, we all know the city did not maintain it. What makes you think we're going to maintain it now? With, with a declining tax base, we don't even have money for paving yet, budgeted. <clears throat> and there's issues as to who's going to own the bridge, who's willing to maintain it. Who's going to insure it? Who's going to monitor it? Uh, yeah. But we didn't ask the people over by the zoo to buy that bridge on Norman Way. We fixed it, and we spent a lot of money fixing it. You had no, you have no alternative at Norman Way. What killed, what killed McBride Viaduct, and you kind of heard that comment out of Pat Howard, was the fact that. If you had not built the east side connector, you would have to keep McBride. McBride's fate was sealed when the, when the Commonwealth many years ago, they should have addressed the problem way back when they built the connector. They did not build an on and off ramp at Buffalo Road. I can't prove why, but I believe in my heart it's because they looked at McBride and said it was in good shape. But right. it quickly went downhill. Yeah. Now you have an access point north and south, uh, granted, not down the line, but right there in the immediate area, only a few hundred yards away from each other. If if you had that situation at Glenwood Park, if you notice at Glenwood Park, and if you're going to bring up Norman Way, you better bring up the bridge that they closed at the zoo. Well, you know. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. They closed that bridge. Why, John? Bob, you know, the I really think that you've talked quite a bit, but I'm here and you're not letting me talk. Well, go ahead. What you, uh, give okay. give me a reason why if, if they close the bridge at the zoo. Okay, so the, uh, let's go back to the viaduct. Okay. The mayor said, I ran on the viaduct and I didn't see any safety problem. You didn't what? And, and the mayor said he ran. He yeah. ran. He jogged. So he's in good shape. He can jog. And he's not on there long enough to, to, to breathe the fumes. He's not using an electric wheelchair. He's not holding on to kids. He's not carrying bags of groceries. Wait a minute. You're saying there's fumes on the bridge, right? Yeah. Okay, so why would you want to keep the bridge then? No, the bridge being the bridge of the Bayfront Connector. There's a, there's a fumes there of the diesel traffic and everything else. It was never evaluated. Well, you don't think there was fumes when McBride had trucks on it? We're not, we're talking about now. Yeah, so what are you going to do with the, well, yeah, but what are you going to do with the vehicular traffic? It, it, that's exactly what they're doing now. There's no reason they can't do the Buffalo Road interchange. The two are unrelated projects now. Well, you talked to the state about that. There's only so much money and that's all there. It's not our money. Remember that. We, if we're, if we're not going to do it on our own, we got to go by the rules that the Commonwealth and the federal government set up. The Commonwealth told us. They sent us an email, and they mm -hmm. said there's one about 1.2 million available for demolition offset. Right. If if you want to take control of the bridge, the city, yes. No, no. If you want to take control of the bridge, the city has made the decision that they're not going to maintain control of the bridge. But you had poor. Information. 
information. You did not consider the uh, air pollution and how it will impact people walking along the connector. You, we well, you had the same thing when McBride. Where was the outrage when McBride had the fumes? When you made the decision to approve the study, there was no crossing at 12 from the Bayfront connector. That changed after you, the you got, you got, you got. Are you aware that there's hazardous waste underneath McBride right now? There is um, ether there, and arsenic. What? Jeez. And you That's want kids? It? And you want kids to walk over that bridge? Under the ground. You know, the, it's under the ground. See what? Ha- I've been we, walking there for ten years. You can't bring that you, up. You you got scrap metals there and stuff. There's got to be more than that. In the you know the you know as East Siders, Kaz, you and I have. Okay, Kaz, I understand. Driven. You have no comfort to offer me in my distress over how we are. No, I am distressed, but I people. I have to. I, here's here's how it works out. I'll give you a couple more minutes, Freda. But here's the problem. Right now, I have 95 cents guaranteed on every dollar. Okay? I don't have any other guarantee. If, if we don't do this and we are stuck with the bridge and we lose the money, are you prepared? Are you prepared to answer to the public? We have most of the money needed to do the initial rehabilitation. Where, where is it? We haven't seen any, uh. Demolition offset money. Yeah, that's, whoa, 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 whoa. That, that's not yours until we turn over the bridge. No, no, it's ours, the people of the city. No, the no, no, it's not, Freda. Freda, over the bridge. Freda, the money is being... Time, you obviously don't agree. No, Freda, you weren't at the... It's not in this project. Freda, were you at the same meeting I was at where they explained the $1.2 million? The $1.2 goes to whoever owns the bridge. Right, and the city can... It owns the bridge now. And the city has made a decision... Right or wrong, and if you can convince, if you can convince the administration and council to take the bridge back, then you better be prepared to financially take care of the bridge. Well, I think Adam has presented the information that it's doable. Nobody, nobody is going to offer grants to either a jurisdiction or a nonprofit in cooperation with a jurisdiction like Leaf. For a project that is on the chopping block. Once you take this project off the chopping block, we can help you raise the money needed above and beyond the demolition offset money. That, that's not a good guarantee for the public. <laughs> that's zero guarantee. Well, hopefully we can find four people of good heart to, uh, um, <laughs> well, the- it's not that I'm a cold heart, but I have to look at real, I have to be able to look at the 99,000 people that inhabit the city of Erie and I have to be able to tell them that they're not going to be financially liable for well, something that we don't have the money to maintain. Sonia has put a motion on the agenda to have a hearing. I think it'd be great to table the other three motions. Well, then you better be prepared to, if the state or federal government pools the money, I'm going to send them to your house, Freda. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make dinner for them. Okay. What are we having? <laughs> we might come, too. But well, you know, you and I have driven the. We were East Side guys, you and I. Look, in a perfect world, if we were Pittsburgh and we had the political power, yeah. we would have that bridge. But this was studied for eight years. Mr. Trot was even on the committee and admitted at a public meeting that he didn't say anything because he felt his word wouldn't matter. Right. Well, why were you appointed to a committee if you didn't work and open up your mouth? Yeah, I mean, it's if a- that's, I'm not paraphrasing. This is what. Well, see, they've drugged their feet forever on on the bridge situation. I mean... I mean, it's not us putting that in. You know what? The, the federal government told us this is their timetable. Now, you know, we have to, we, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not... We'll talk about it in a minute. Go ahead, caller. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, do these people, are they, are they structural engineers that know all about how the, de- the bridge has been deteriorating for years with the road salt going on deteriorating the concrete. It's not made of steel. It is a big, a big project to restore that bridge. Well, if you, you know, and, and the question that hasn't been answered yet is that I was told, and I don't know, and I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, but we abandoned the bridge, I think, officially. And if we reopened, well, we closed it, and if, if we abandoned it, uh, you know, the bridge does not meet the current criteria for new bridges. Here's a question that, you know, everybody... Well, let the... Let, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, then I'm going to let John weigh in. Go ahead, sir. Oh, this is 
John. Oh, no, I mean, anyway, I'm John. <laughs> no, he's John over here. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. I talked to a city engineer. I know one of the city engineers, and I guess he went down and looked at it, you know, and he said, all you got to do is touch that bridge in certain places underneath, tap it with a little hammer. He said, and a big chunk of concrete fall off it. And it's, it's junk. It's gone. It's garbage. Tear it down. What Look, I, I, I marched for that bridge, but that was eight years ago, and nothing's changed, you know. Well, these people don't live over there, and they're so concerned about the bridge. Like it's going to end here or something? The, the, bridge, the bridge's fate was sealed when they built the East Side Connector. I mean, uh, the lady pointed out about uh, Norman Way, but if you remember going to the zoo, they closed that road, remember? The Norman Way Bridge was a small bridge. It wasn't as massive as the viaduct. Right, but, but what, what sealed the fate of the zoo bridge, which they don't mention, right. Yeah, right. was when they built that, uh, the, new, uh, the new 38th Street, Right. Which made that, that little, if you remember in the old days, we had to go around the zoo. Oh, yeah. And make a left and then go right up, you know. All that was eliminated. You know, that bridge was, well, not closed, but the zoo maintains it now. You know, a couple things that, you know, as far as that bridge goes. I drove, I've lived on the east side. I, I mean, I'm, honestly, I do miss the bridge. I do too. But I mean, I miss it. But that, the, you know, the East Avenue area, all that was in decline prior to the bridge. As far as that neighborhood, the, the decline of the businesses and the decline of that part of town was all before the bridge. Now, some of the estimates that I've heard are six million dollars to fix the bridge to be drivable. But here's a question that no, I don't hear anybody talking about: the Franklin Avenue bridge is going next. Is next? I mean, where are we going to get the money to? I mean, where are we going to get the money to fix that bridge? Because that, I mean, that is a, the, a major corridor here's over what, there. Here's what I would rather do. If I had my choice, sir, are you still there? Yeah, go ahead. I, I drove from uh, East Side Connector over to Franklin Avenue Bridge. There's not much going across the east side. It's kind of devoid of north-south passages. It would make more sense for the city to actually go to the Commonwealth and try to build a bridge somewhere between Franklin and the East Side Connector to, to improve access to the East Side than it would be to, you know, rebuild McBride. And that may be a project down the line we need to look at, building another bridge on the East Side, you know, much like they did on Harbor Creek. Yeah, I'm trying to think where you well, could Well, think that. about it now. If you try to cross north to south in the city, there's like a no-man's land between... Uh, there's not many places you can actually go north to south. Right. You're dead-ended by the tracks. It would make more sense to build a bridge somewhere on the east side to uh, open that area up yeah. than, than, to, than to put money into the McBride. Well, what, what's happened is, you know, and a lot of cities have done studies, like the Bayfront Connector has assisted in choking off that part of town. Yes, it has. It, is, it has not been – it's been good for the in and out of traffic, but as far as – the decline of that part of town, it has definitely played, well, Cleveland, played a role. Cleveland found that out. A lot of play, a lot of cities are taking them out of there after they've, you know, spent the money because it, you know, like, uh, half the streets are now choked off going east to west. Right, because we called ESAC them all. Yeah. So, I mean, the Bayfront Highway had its good points, but then again, it choked off that part of town. It hasn't happened that way too much on the west side because it goes from the, uh, you know, the Bayfront pretty much to the highway. Right. So it ha- the west side hasn't seen as, as, as big of an effect on no, as the east, east side. It cut right through the neighborhood. Correct. It right through the neighborhood, and it choked it out, and it was already starting to die in the first place, and that just put the death grip on it, con- combined with the viaduct's decline. You still there, sir? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to get off and let you guys. Well, go ahead. If you got another point, go, you know. I was going to say, what these people don't understand, they got to look up the definition of money. You know, where's the money coming from? Well, right now, the taxpayers directly in the city are, are only paying a nickel on every dollar. Mm-hmm. Uh, 95 cents, 80 cents of it's coming from the Fed, right. 15 from the, from the, you know, state. Yeah, it's still us, though. We're still... And you know what? Here, what, what, what's problematic is that if you watch Washington and Harrisburg and the dysfunction that's there, the longer we delay, they're looking for money to grab. And if, you know, if we're not ready to, to proceed at their pace, 
I'm surprised. It's I, I got. I got to be able to answer to the rest of the citizens and say, guess what? Now, one every dollar that we spend is going to be out of your pocket, even though it indirectly is. But now it's going to be directly out of your pocket. How, how do you explain I that? Mean, it, it was supposed to be a park, a walkway. I mean, what? I mean, I don't even know what what it want. What? What? And they point out the High Line. The High Line had a 5013C, well funded, and and all that. They point to Bethlehem. And Bethlehem, you got to go there to see what you're talking about. Bethlehem is a lot more than just an abandoned steel mill. They actually developed the area around Bethlehem. Yeah. You know that was a project that, you know, they 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 can't tear down the factory because it's a it's an environmental hazard. Well, a lot of people are getting a lot of publicity out of the. Well, whole you know, thing. I, I you know, look, I, I admire their fight. Yeah. But you know, this has been going on for eight years. Yeah. And and the federal <laughs> clock is ticking, and the state clock is ticking. Yeah. And you know what? I have to decide: do I take the ninety-five cents? One thing that I'm getting now, or yeah. do I do I turn one th- it down? The one thing that I do agree with one hundred percent is having those kids walk the Bayfront Highway when uh, in the winter time. Some yeah. if, if if the bridge is torn down, some type of structure has to be. Well, they are going to. They, they part of the deal is. And, and it was written in that they're going to make the wall higher to protect the kids. On, on the advice of the, of the group that the CPR, they took their case to the heart. They're going to make a higher fence and a higher barricade. You have to. Okay. Because it's, it's dangerous. But if you, if you, it doesn't matter where you want to have kids walking, unless you're going to build a separate footbridge, they're go- you're going to have to accommodate traffic and, and people. Right. And so the, the state is willing to raise the wall, and there is money. I saw the budget. There is money being allocated to raise the wall and the fence. They'll have a, they'll figure it out. Pardon? They'll figure it out. They'll do something, and these people are all upset. Well, I'm going to get off the line here and let somebody else jump in there. And, uh... Yeah, thank you. Thanks for calling. But, yeah, they did say they're going to make the wall bigger, the actual barricade. Right. And extend the um, the wire mesh. You know, the High Line in New York is, is very nice, but it's a whole different, uh, you know, it's not overlooking the dump, the railroad tracks, and buildings that could topple over on top of it at any second. And the, uh, you know, I, if it was anything, I'd rather, I wish the road would reopen. If they're going to do anything, put the, open the road again. But at this point, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's the co- It's not cost prohibitive. We have another bridge right down the street that's ready to fall over. Yeah. I mean, I understand why. I'm not quite sure the you know the motives, but uh, I think that uh, something has to be done one way or another. Like really, some. I mean, it, it, it's just it's just over and over. I'm surprised the state hasn't pulled the funding already. Well, I mean, I don't know. What do I know? Go ahead, caller. <laughs> what? What was that? I don't know. I I just got, got kind of all wound up listening to that woman cry the blues about the McBride Bride Art Bridge. That is a has been. It's it's over time. Get rid of it. The state is already planning on reducing the Bayfront Highway down to like about three lanes because they want everybody to go across Tall Street. And yep. they've got a lot of money invested in this project. It's because of the, the route down by Hammond Hospital where you get onto the Bayfront either going <laughs> east or west. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, when they said that they wanted to open up 12th Street again, this is the same state that closed, well, you know, they closed 12th Street down, remember? True. For, when we were kids, they opened 12th Street up to, to move traffic east to west. They ripped out the railroad tracks, remember, John? And then all of a sudden, when I, I told Bill Pennant, I said, now you want people to access 12th Street. When you put buses back on French Street, you got uh, parking on French Street. You got the Civic Center, which blocks it with trucks. Yeah. And then you want people from Hammett and Erie Insurance to head south on French Street and then access 12th Street, which has now been scrimped down. Yeah. I said, you know, you, then you wonder why people take the Bayfront Highway. Oh, you know, that's a $15 million project, that corner there. Which one? Down there by Hammond Hospital. Yeah, there, well, there's three plans that they're looking at, and they all got pluses and minuses. Uh, there's a road they want to build that, if they build it, 
is going to have a detrimental effect on uh, the, what they call the transient boat building, the one with the bait shop and the miniature golf. True. Well, it's and then it will also that. then it will also cut through some of the private marinas. And you know they're saying is there a way to not hurt business? You know to work that access road around a little bit. Well, at least they're looking into that. No, well, they are, and it, you know, like I said, there's three plans, and they all got their uh, pluses and minuses. Well, this plan with the Port Authority has is going to take away that uh, golf, the mini golf, and the bait stand because they only want to gauge a community down there. Well, that, that could be a fight, though, because, you know, they still have to come to council for approval. And I'm not, my vote is not going to be to just wipe out people's businesses and... All aspects of it before you do your vote. And the McAllister product, I heard Casey Wells saying, anybody submits a bid for something, we'll look at it. You know, that's, that is, I think that has run out, hasn't it? What do you mean McAllister? He doesn't have anything to do with McAllister. He has GAF. Yeah. No, I'm talking about McAllister down there. I thought he had some of that, too. I don't think he does. I think that's a port authority. The port? Well, nobody wants to look at it from there, either. No, they've been, you know, they've been talking. There's been so many plans for McAllister. I remember the one that looked real good was the three-story parking garage that had businesses, offices, and residential mixed in, and then they were going to cut a canal through it. Yeah. Don't laugh. That looked promising. That died. Then there was the 13-story or 14-story high-rise uh, next to it that that died. All around the time the market tumbled, and you know I don't I don't know what's going to go on down there. Well, you got Chambers uh, redevelopment gentleman Go Go Goner is his name. Groner, yeah. I mean, he's been there for 13 years. What has he been doing for 13 years? That Chris Mong or well, Groner Groner was not in fairness to Chris, and I know Chris. Chris was the finance man. Right. And he did not have anything to do with... Uh, redevelopment. Yeah, or redevelopment. Or, no, he's in economic development now. Right. So he had nothing to do with the planning or anything like that. His job was, and he did a very good job at it, was to uh, control the small business loans that we did. And a lot of things he did were very proactive. In fact, just recently, he found a way to reposition some money so that we can now make it available to small businesses at less restrictions because we're doing it away from the federal and state government. When they, when they give us money, we have to play by their rules. Oh, true. We, we, can't, we can't lend out. I'll give you an example, like the Dairy Queen up by my area. They took advantage of a small business loan. And there were rules, you know, they were, what they had to do, how many people they had to maintain. And uh, that's the one on Pine Avenue. Was the check cut out to them right away? Pardon? Was the check cut out to them right away for this improvement? No, the, the money stayed with us. And the problem was because they couldn't get together on a good uh, contractor, Contractor, and until the numbers were finalized, we did not release the check. Oh, that's why it took so long? Yeah, well, yeah, because initially we approved it. I and I kept asking out. the gentleman up there what was wrong. And he goes, well, we got all kinds of problems with the contractor. And so until they solved that problem, we kept the money on escrow. It was released when, when the plan was guaranteed, and, and now you see you saved the business on the east side. And, uh, but the new thing that we're planning is going to be smaller scaled loans for people like smaller businesses with less restrictions. And we hope to grow that program. So Chris Croner has been a good man in that area, and I'm glad that now he's in a policy making decision. And I think, I think John, you'll be pleased with him, really. I hope so. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's I, I was not pleased with some of the other people. I, I think our problem with economic development is our people sit around and they have breakfast on an agro and, sh- and crap like that, but well, they're not act out there. You know, we need to be calling up. And I know, I know I'm not going to say a certain company. But we years ago I used to joke we need to call like, you know, Joe's Crab Shack or what, whatever people want to see in this town, a movie theater. We, sh- we should be calling these people and saying, hey, you know, wh- why don't you want to come to Erie? What is it? Years ago, I met a gentleman named Magic Johnson. You ever hear that name? Have I heard of Magic Johnson? Yeah. Well, a little bit. Yeah, the basketball player. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, at the time, he was funding minority businesses. And we were at a dinner, and he had one of the ex-mayors there. And he made a statement which astounded me. He said, 
he at the time he was dealing with uh, minority movie a um, uh, movie chain and Starbucks coffee. He had the franchise, and if you remember, we were talking about putting one in on Parade Street. Right. Well, he said no one from the city of Erie ever contacted him. Right. And at the time, he was the only the only thing he wanted to do was a it had to be minority owned. It didn't say where it had to be, although they would like it to be in in a uh, an area that could use it. So I'm saying nobody bothered to call this guy. This is what your economic development people need to be doing. I don't care where they put the Starbucks. I really don't care. As long as it's in the city or something like that. So we need to call these people and say, what is it that we need to offer you? And then come to council and say, well, we need a tax break or we need a, a rezoning. I'm willing to do it. A few years ago, Erie was labeled by the state as a core city, which means, you know, when it came to getting grants, we would be more favorable to attain them. Right. And, you know, it was got to the point where we were getting calls from the Department of Economic in Pennsylvania saying, Erie, where are your grant requests? What yeah. are you doing? And we never turned them in. Then that whole situation left town. Then Chris Mong came in. And then that's when you started reading in the paper, we got this, we got that, we got this. We could have had a lot more because we were a core city. Well, we sat there. We sat there and did nothing. But now, I mean, you know, with the new guy, uh, Chris Mong started the ball rolling. We got small business loans. We got Lerda coming in. You know, at least uh, you know, we're being proactive well, yeah, to bring prior, businesses prior here. Prior to Chris, and it was bad. I don't know if you know this, but. Chamber didn't help us out. Who? Chamber. Chamber of what? Ch- chamber of Development down there. The Chamber oh. of Waste of Time? Yeah, they, you mean that place? They can't make up their mind who they like. <laughs> I mean, they got so many organs. We, we're like a shotgun. We're firing. Nobody knows what uh, the left hand, we don't even have a right hand. It's like a shotgun. The left where hand, the pellets are going to end. The left hand doesn't even know what the left hand is doing, let alone what to care about what the right hand is doing. True. And but only, yeah, I have a, six figure wages and uh, they do nothing. You sit there and put out a little pamphlet once in a while. Well, I'm going to tell you who's going to start taking care of business, and it's already started. Is that group, the Downtown Development Corporation? They what do you mean with uh, the, yeah, Erie Insurance? Erie Insurance and that hold on that whole crew, them what guys, is, they've already made a purchase. I don't know if you know it or not. Did you know? No. Uh, uh, Sherlock's Park Place. They bought it. They bought that from Tippy. From Tippy, and look out! I'm telling you, this the downtown. I've, I said this two months ago. The downtown landscape is going to be changing drastically. Well, I within mean, within the next ten, and I mean. Drastic. I, I hope. I hope it becomes more than just a bunch of. Uh, it's going, I won't go any further. It's going to be changing drastically. I'm just going to tell you right now. Was talking about the McBride Vidocs and the fumes. She got to get on 38th and Liberty, 35th and Liberty, and uh, 38th and Page Street. There's fumes all over. Well, the trouble in America, as as a whole, America is a. Yes, yes, it is. If you go, if you go to Europe, I was amazed when we were in Poland. I, I couldn't believe this. We, we left our hotel. We walked up to City Hall, which wasn't a big walk. I'll be honest. Then we sat there and said, "Now we're going to the Marie Maria Curie University." So we're looking for the buses. There were no buses. We started walking. We figured, well, it must be like going to Gannon, you know, from City Hall. Uh, two and a half miles later, we got to the campus. And this is what you see in Poland and Europe. You see people walking from what would be Edinburgh to the city. You see people along the wa- walking, along the highway. You don't see that much traffic. Even in the city of Lublin, which was 400,000 people, 300,000, you didn't see that ma- many cars. Well, they have bikes, you know, bikes. They were bikes. bikes, they have li- public transportation. Right. I mean, America, we, <coughs> we, we are, we're lazy. You know, and I'm bad, okay, to get to my haircut. I'm I, bad instead too, of me right? walking up the hill, the lousy three quarters of a mile, I gotta take my car. Why? Right. And I'm guilty, okay? We're all guilty. We're all guilty, cause we are lazy in America. We are, you know, when I was a kid, you had a bicycle, and you walked to school. I, the other day I went there, and 90% of the kids are being picked up by parents in cars. Yeah. So you wonder where the, where the fumes are coming from? Yeah. People better wake up. This is a, look, I'm, this is not New York. This is a major city. On when, a final note. When you're 90,000, 100,000 people, you're a major city. You're going to have fumes. 
light pollution and all that, because that's what America is about. Final and until we change our attitudes, you know. You're right. My final note is, Bacha Galoop, I'm glad he lost last night. Have a great day. Bacha Galoop, where'd you pull that one out of? Oh, the Patriots? Yeah, I know. You're bringing up that Lou Monty song. Yeah. That was a great game. Hey, all I can say is fly, Eagles, fly. Eagles hey. would soar. And a real Pennsylvania city finally won. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole thing here is it almost got taken away like the Pittsburgh deal. Oh, yeah, that one play. I'm telling you, I was. I, oh, I was waiting. We were all sitting there going, here it comes. Right. Get ready. Here's where but they hand what, it to them. That's what you expect when you're anybody else but Pittsburgh. You figure. Yeah. You know, Usually Pittsburgh gets those breaks. Well, they, yeah, they, but they got, they get, but New England gets more breaks. Than, he, Pittsburgh got, they got screwed on that. Remember where it started, John, with the immaculate deception. Right. So, you know the whole thing here is the officials finally called the game straight. Yeah, they did. The, You're right. Envelopes of. Uh, you are absolutely right. That's we, probably because who was the referee? It wasn't that one guy. I don't like. I hope. No, which one? Yeah, you don't <laughs> like that one that's always with uh, Cleveland. The one from Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing ever goes right when he's got the flag in his hand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks. You know, the, ba- the uh, to touch on one thing he just said, that was a great game last night. But you know what? That was one of the better Super Bowls I've ever seen. Now I want to see the bill that cost the city of Minneapolis. Or Philadelphia. I, I, did you see they're burning Philadelphia down? Now, why? Why, I, do, you, I don't why know. do you burn a town down? I have no idea why you would do that. But but you know what? Like Minneapolis now, they, you know, the bars may have made out in the restaurants, yeah. but the tax bill... Between the security, yeah. Police, the helicopters, overtime. the military. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, the NFL's got to kick in for some of that, but this, the whole city. Did you ever, did you ever wonder what happens after the Olympics? They showed these towns like, like Greece, Athens. I think we should put a bid in for the Super Bowl. What do you think? Have it up at Veterans Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, how much would the tickets be? Let's see. There are three thousand dollars now. Yeah, right. Let's see. In a ten thousand seat stadium, they would be. Uh, what do you think? A lot. Hundred grand. Maybe? Yeah, at least. <laughs> but uh, three thousand for a ticket. The you du- know, when I was a kid, they played the game. Not a big deal, you know. Yeah. There's no joke. I read the book about the Cleveland Browns when they won. Yeah. The guys walked back to the hotel. The game was over. They went home. You yeah. know. Nobody had parties for a week and a half. Yeah. Now we got this whole two weeks leading up to it. Yeah. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Cass. What's up? If they have it at the Veterans Stadium, where's the other team going to play at? <laughs> what do you mean? That's only big enough for one team. No, oh, they could they could have a football game there, but. <laughs> hey, uh, downtown. <laughs> yeah. Well, you mentioned that you when you're over in Lublin. Um, I don't know if you had the experience I did when I was over there, but they they set up those small. I don't want to. They're not kiosks like they have in a mall, but they're in small independent uh, people who sell things like in little uh, yeah for booths and that. You know? I, I would call them like a kiosk. Yeah. Why can't we get something like that allowed at the downtown park? Maybe too. You know, in the summertime, that would draw more people downtown. They go well. You, you know, that's up to really. Uh, uh, now that we have a downtown improvement district, you know, that would be up to them. And like, like John mentioned, you know, the people that are now investing in the city, if, if it was well maintained, I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, I've seen what they do in, uh, like Bethlehem, they have them, um, uh, not at all the time, but like certain, certain times of the year, they have these little booths set up. But I think if you were to do that, like they do in Europe, you got to make sure they meet certain criteria and they're, you know, well maintained. Are you correct there? And then you got to see what's the effect on the people that got brick and mortar stores. Well, I don't know how. You know, does it hurt them or help them? I don't know how strict their, sa- their sanitary code or uh, code would be for the food vendors. You know. <laughs> well, they they do get inspected by the county, no. and and from what I hear, I I knew Ernie, the the hot dog guy it was you know used to be he's around the park. Right. And he maintained a pretty clean, uh, I know his was very good because we hired him at a, at a club I belonged to. And, uh, he was inspected regularly. It was good, I enjoyed him too. Yeah, and uh, so I mean, even during the festival, every one of those merchants has to have an initial inspection. Right. And if you remember a few years back, to, to prove to you that they do keep up on it, uh, they went back and re-inspected a guy and found out he had outdated meat. 
and they, and they took it down to the dump. And the funny part was, the guy's brother followed the truck down to the dump to try to bring it back. Jeez, okay. Yeah, I mean, that was a true story. You can't make that up. And so the, you know, the health department does their best. Yeah. And if, you know, if you do get people complaining, they will come back and, uh, you know, re-monitor the situation. The other thing, too, they mentioned about that 16501 code, the uh, average income. I don't know. I, I'm assuming they must have been including the various uh, tower, uh, you know, Mid-City Towers, Trudeau Towers, and Smith's Towers, and Richfield Arms. Because a lot of those places are all for their section, low class, low. You mean in that zip code? Huh? Oh, you mean that zip code thing they did? Zip code. They, those are all low-income people living in those places. That's well, yeah, that's why. Right. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, and, that, and that points out one of the problems we have in downtown Erie, which is you're, you're trying to bring, John may be able to, you know, he talks with, uh, one of the things, the problems they got in trying to develop downtown is, you want to bring in things like uh, what the public wants, like Starbucks and nice restaurants and stuff. But then you're uh, you're, you're surrounded by. Uh, I'm not saying yeah, yeah. You, you got you, you got Section Eight housing. You got the economic impact. I can't yeah. support those things. No. And a lot of people, you know, are they going to come downtown? Well, did you and, you know support it when? When, and I'll put it on the line. You got people panhandling and everything else. You know, I, I wouldn't open a business on State Street right and, now. And, and that's one of the things. You know, I'm not against people that are, are you know, uh, you know, impoverished, and we we have them amongst us, and we have to take care of them. But well, and whenever you have a living, vibrant city, you can't. There has to. You can't have that in your downtown district. You know, Erie right now is we're losing one of our longtime staples in downtown, the, the Manicor Club. Yeah, that's going to be sold. It's and that's what do you do with sold. that building now? I mean, there's another, that is one of Erie's most historical landmark clubs where a lot of people, you, they can't sustain it anymore. So they're moving and that building is going to be up for sale. Well, I took a ride along State Street and I'm looking, there's little businesses yeah. popping out. Yeah. Now we got a lot of bars, let's say, but. Well, you get a lot of bars and then you get a lot of stores, you know, the little. Yeah. So I mean, you know, when you look at that, you're going, uh, you know, who's going to pay the taxes? Yeah. Now, if, if we lose the Manicor Club, it, it's, it's not, you know, look, I didn't belong there, so I have no vested interest, yeah. but where's the tax go? You know, who's going to own it? What's going to happen to it? Because I think they're in financial trouble. They're, they're, they're selling it. So, I mean, you know, when you look at it, you, you hope, you know, something good comes of it, at, but. At this point, it's, it's, what's going on down here is scary because, you know, you have, we we don't have enough people living in this area and to support the well, restaurants I mean, look, the and the shops. Counties losing population. Yeah, uh, you know it comes as no surprise that Bonton closed. That's all around the country, but there, you know, all around the you know when you look at our area, we're 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 not a vibrant metropolitan area. We try to when we we try to introduce. Uh, those, uh, the housing, you know, the inner city housing to bring, we put those condos, $180,000 condos. In the wrong place. Overlooking an Arby's restaurant. Yeah, wrong place. I mean, you can't, I mean, that type of development, when it came, that was through Pittsburgh or something like that. Great idea. That's the kind of thing you, you want to reintroduce downtown living to people with, with disposable income. And, you know, the Boston store, those apartments in there are, are, are pretty nice. Well, here's what but I would They're if, Section 8 now. If you, you go know? to Pittsburgh, everybody It's points unfortunate. To, I mean, it's sad. People to Pittsburgh, okay? They, they have apartments in downtown, but what they don't tell you, what you don't see is they took the old uh, Kaufman's department store. Okay, they put a – now, you can't do this in Erie. They put a McCormick and Schmick's in there. That's a high-end steak restaurant. Well, for Pittsburgh – you know, you got big businessmen down there, so you got that core there. Plus, you've made it so that people who work downtown Pittsburgh, who have the e- economic income, yeah. have have chosen to live downtown, right? Because there are things to do. That's what I think you're saying that's going to happen, right? Okay, when they get that settled to where downtown takes on a persona, yeah. Then you can have apartments in certain, right. like the Boston store. You can upgrade them. Yeah. You can make them more accommodable. But the real gem, and this is where I know everybody disagrees, 
The water is pristine. We need to see the water. Every town that has a waterfront has a district where they, they have put residential and commercial aspects in it. You have to. And the way our it, system... You know, it's, it's just so you don't do the whole thing. No. And I think... That's where mixed, the word mixed use comes in. Right. But putting you know. all those apartments over in Arby's with with bars behind you that make... Uh, you know, if you want a, a quality of life, how are you going to sit on your back porch? Yeah. And if you don't like the kind of music that's being played... Right. Or you, you got the sound of kids walking up and down the street... You know, intoxicated. Yeah, I don't think that's what you I mean, want. You got to remember that was built when Griswold Plaza. I mean that. I mean that that's nice, but it wasn't. You know that. You know, there's a lot of transients. You know, and there's a lot. You know, you can't. But I think they've been like you know. You, you I'll, can't I'll, build. Let me let me let me finish that thought. Yeah. You can't build a hundred eighty thousand dollar condos one block away from the mental health association. I mean, and, and the homeless shelter. Where you have, I mean, you just can't do that. I mean, I, I understand the needs of why those places are there, but you can't locate $180,000 condos one block away from there and expect people to spend that kind of money to overlook an Arby's restaurant. Well, they wanted people to walk through Griswold. Yeah, you're, you're correct in some of that. And I would think, I'm, I was going to try to mention here, Cash, I know in Pittsburgh, you know, where Homestead is, they, they took the, uh, where the mills used to be. Yeah, that's a very nice development there. And I'm wondering what would it take to maybe try to bring something like that into downtown there, even if at a smaller port, uh, scale than what they have there, because they really had to grow and expand it all out. Well, we're, we're trying that to GF site, really. Right. If, well, if you let's, let's see if we can't get somebody that was involved in developing that to, uh, uh, give us some guidance and maybe encourage maybe some maybe businesses from there like Eaton Park and all to they're down in that area. Well, isn't Homestead where they got the uh, the Lowe's Theater and the Buster and Jerry's? They got some down there, yeah. And, That's where the uh, smokestacks are, right? And, uh, like uh, Lowe's Hardware Store, uh, uh, Lowe's uh, Hardware Store. Yeah. yeah, and they got the big four smokestacks there yet. Yeah, they still have them. Yeah, that's uh, see that that's what we're trying to kind of. Kind of do down at GF site. Huh? You can't get rid of that smokestack down here because that's a historic marker. Well, they, they also tell you that they, everybody says, why don't they tear the one down by uh, the library? Uh, you can't do that. But it's loaded with carcinogens. Well, not only that, but that's a historic marker. That was the first smokestack built in the United States using a floating scaffold. Uh. The only reason I know it is that I know one of the guys that was, was the carpenter keeping that scaffold floating up that chimney that went up, and that is marked in the National Historical Markers Systems. Yeah. So you can't tear that down. That's why that was left. Right. You know, it's... Uh... I, I'll let you go. I've got somebody else to call. Hey, thanks, Doc. And uh... hey, he's from... Uh... You know, when people, when it comes to the developers and we're not getting anybody... Because let's say if I, you know, I run a corporation, a development corporation, and I get, you know, there's this property, then I start looking at the demographic study of Erie, the population decline, yeah. the school district, the taxes. You're not coming here. The lack of income. The, uh, da 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 It's like, well, forget that one. <laughs> I mean, you got to remember, people that don't live here, that live out of town, we're just numbers. I mean, we're just a, seri- a well, set here, of numbers. Here, here's a perfect example. My parish priest. I'll hold my thought. Yeah. Go ahead, caller. Hello? My parish priest, many years ago, contacted someone about putting a restaurant at East Side. And all they did was look at numbers. What's that? On who? Go ahead, caller. Hello? Hello? Hello, yeah, Michael Keyes, uh, 36 and Reed. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, give the councilman some information. Can you hear that? He's cutting out. Yeah, he is. Hello? I got it up all the way. Okay, you try it. Go ahead, caller. Hello, Michael Keyes, 36 and Reed. Here it goes. Uh, I just wanted to 
give the councilman some information about the VIDOC. The, according to the papers that I've seen from PennDOT, the mayor has till the last day of this calendar year to sign the contract. And so that the funding isn't in in danger of being lost through a slowdown process or a re-engagement process. And the second thing is, uh, I know the mayor wants to go to a full 10-year alert us. My concern is we have almost $500 million of construction going on, which is going to be going on. Why would we uh, not realize any of this tax income until 2030? I think it's important that uh, we capture that money and capture those taxes during this time. And I think that would be a recommendation, and that would help the city when these other buildings go up. It will add money to the city coffers. What, what do you, you're saying that, uh, let's take Erie Insurance for exchange. Okay, what are you saying that they, they're not, they're not gonna pay? Well, if you haven't heard, the mayor wants to reintroduce a full 10 year alert. Well, I think also, and council talked about this, right now we're limited to only a certain part of the city. And that's not helping people, uh, like, if you wanted businesses to come uh, south of 28th Street, let's say, that, that that's not going to help them. So, in other words, if you're building downtown or into what they call the <coughs> CDBG area, which I think now alert is only in, that's what I was made aware of, then that's detrimental to people who want to make some changes like uh, in the other parts of town. And so what they're offering is that, there's a chance that if you can get people, look, this is a long-range project. This, if you read the comprehensive plan, it talks in terms of 10 years and 20 years. So, yes, there's going to be some sacrifice, but how do you get people to come into the city? Nobody is, nobody wants to live here and nobody wants to build here, no businesses. I was just going to tell you, tell you a little story about uh, my parish priest approached a, a large chain to put a place on the east side of town. Because if you look at the east side of town, except for uh, Jade Garden, Pizza Hut, Valerio's, Breakfast Place, Nunzi's, Jade Garden, uh, there's not really much out there. No. And none of the chains want to come in here. None of the grocery stores want to come in here. Uh, they look at the, the city of Erie like it's a dead zone. They're perfectly well, and in, in the case of what my priest was asking for, they built that same restaurant one block over the Wesleyville line in Harbor Creek. Yeah. And, and they wouldn't even look at Erie, even though the income level in that part of town and everything is comparable to Harbor Creek and Mill Creek. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I don't know what the mayor's proposing yet officially. When he talks to council, I think some of us are going to be in favor of some modification to the alerta tax. It's worked in some areas. Uh, we got Smith's provision to move in here. We secured Erie Insurance many years ago with Keystone grants and alerta grants. Uh, under Mayor Filippi, he tried, and for a short, ter short term, we start having people building uh, new homes and garages on the east side of town. And on the west side of town. Well, you know, we kind of touched base. Well, let, we'll let him. Uh, okay, Then we'll, we got we okay. come back. Yeah, go, go ahead, ahead uh, What do you think? Oh, I I believe that the the way the alerter is. Uh, I did read the plan, by the way, and I'm not against the expansion of the area. I don't know how that works with uh, within the government, but uh, but the way it is tiered now. Uh, the amount of building that's going on right now would, that's already going up, would be essentially giving that money away if we adopt this new standard. And that's really my concern as the taxpayer is if we don't, uh, collect taxes from, you know, the, the, 
<coughs> that are going on that our city will still be uh, pretty much uh, not financially solvent. Well, the mayor's new proposal would not affect like Erie Insurance. That's already like Hammett and Erie Insurance. Those projects are already already started. But if you want to attract new people, uh, I'll give you an example. The uh, the project with uh, Velocity Net that would not have happened if there were not various grants and and things available. He was perfectly willing to go out to Mill Creek and. It's not like people are dying to come into the city. So we have to do, we, we have to be a little different. And I know it's going to hurt, but right now Erie Insurance is paying taxes on buildings that, well, you remember when, we, when they built their major headquarters yeah. and they took out the Crazy Horse Tavern? Yeah. People complained about the taxes then being lost, but they're paying now. Well, see, sometimes you they're, have, they're paying on that building now. I understand what he's saying, and I agree. But we have to do no, you know, like we talked about a few minutes ago. When a business, other than local, they look at the report, and we're not a Democrat. We're not desired. You don't see them getting alerted in Mill Creek, right? Right. But with a with a uh, with alerta, you spend a little bit to make a lot in the future. But like we talked about, you, once that ten years up, you have you can't escape. And um, you know, as far we need uh, different uh, neighborhoods to. I mean, the part of the redevelopment or the uh, refocus plan is you build the middle, middle class neighborhoods first, and then then you start building from there, and then you att- um, at- attack the different areas, the Bayfront and these other ones and stuff like that. So if you limit it, we're not going to get any. Um, and I mean, nobody's taking advantage of the learning now with no, the I tiered mean, structure. No, I mean, if 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 everything like you know, if you're right about what's going to happen downtown, yeah. And the good feelings start to happen, yeah. and then we got to go out into the neighborhoods. I mean, you, you we, we to, got to start in the neighborhoods where they need a lot of help. Okay, we have. An we need to start building some high quality housing out. We there. have an opportunity right now to where we have a lot of people with a lot of money to start investing in this downtown, and we need to give them the tools and the opportunity and work alongside with these people to get other businesses. And uh, other, you know, people involved in order to help bring the downtown area back. And then once that happens, it'll spread. The West Bay Front will grow, the East Bay Front will grow, and then and if you attack the uh, center, the middle class part of the town, it's for, like the refocus plan. The refocus plan is pretty good. I mean, but fixing the down, and then then you spread from there. But he says it's going to take. It's a ten-year plan, and it's going to take private investment more than it's going to. He wants us to raise taxes, and he said we would have to double taxes in his report. That's what he told council. Okay. Yeah. Now, you you know what that would do if I if yeah. I said you'd be I'm going to there. double your taxes? You'd be sitting out there in the audience watching right. the meeting. I'll, I'll be saluting everybody living out in the suburbs. Yeah. And the only people left in the city are going to be those that can't move. Right. And and I think, you know, looking at that, we, we're going to have to do some things that are going to be painful but I think, you know, we've been lucky. Uh, Smith's provision did not move. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the business we built, like yeah. along the Bayfront, they've stayed. Uh, Erie Insurance has I think taken lot, advantage of their tax credits and lo- stayed. A lot of people will take advantage and, and add to their homes. I think a lot. I mean, the, some of the restrictions and the uh, code stuff. Relax that for a minute, and you'll see some. And, and that'll all pump pump into the well, economy you know, what, as what well. They, what they don't mention is like uh, I think it's uh, there's a project going east of Parade Street. Uh, it's going to be uh, two gentlemen doing it. And I, I can it's at the tip of my tongue. The one's know. a minority investor, and the other one is uh, oh up at the uh, 19th and yeah. uh, Parade Street. So yes, I mean, those are the kind of projects you got to start with. They're coming. Those are you know, those are the things you got to kind of build on, and hopefully, you know. Yeah, those that's that's happening. But you're going to have to give them some breaks sometimes. You have to work with people in the community. I mean, right now, if if I was to move into the city, I wouldn't. No. Okay, I wouldn't unless you said to me, okay, I'm going to give you five years off or seven years off. Right. It could be a 10-year plan, but we could make it decline, what you call declining scale, which would be a little bit off each year. Right. We might, it doesn't have to be a solid 10. If this clock is right, I don't think, I think Mike fell asleep on Yeah. That. No, he come in. Mr. Keys, you want to finish? Yeah, that's the way it is now with the, with the uh, sliding scale uh, from 10 years, you know, uh, 
20% every two years, and I am in favor of that. Well, you know what? Uh, we're good. This is one that we will have discussion on. Which you should. And, and I think we will have a public hearing yeah. on it because it does affect everybody. And before we make it, I mean, I'm council's going to ask some questions. I'm not against it. I want to see what's the best plan for development, but also, you know, what helps us because, look, we, we can't increase taxes. That's out the window. That's, that's nuts. You know, we, we, we might have to do a little bit, but doubling we, it we, like, listen, like we, Buki said is out, is, that's not even. We've got possible. one chance, one chance at this, at this apple, and we better work with these people and these organizations and do what we have to do because we got one chance. And once that chance is done, we are done. So, so Mr. Keys, we got to get off the air, but thanks uh, for calling, Mike. But I want you to. Uh, but his point, he's got a good point. I, I want him. To, I want him to be uh, when we have the, you know, when we have these discussions, we need to hear from the, you know, what the public wants because I'm telling you, we we cannot double taxes on people. That according to Buki, you know, everybody quotes Buki like he's Moses coming down from the mountain, but. You know, if you want to pay double the taxes like he suggested, $650 million, 10 years. What's that mean? $65 million a year. Now, you can look at Erie Insurance right now and say, oh, that's great. We got the first year covered. But year two and three, there's not going to be any $50 million project by uh, Hammett. There's not going to be no $100 million project here. Right. If there isn't, where are you going to come up with that money? Now, Buki said you have to be able to double taxes Invest in yourself. Easy for him to say. It, He's not sitting up here. And that's part of what alert is. We, before the last council went out, we talked about alert. And I think everybody knows that, you know, limiting it to a certain area sounded nice. But if you live where I live, or you're south of 28th and you go, I'd like to, I'd like to do something. Mm-hmm. But there's no advantage to me, you know. Right. Or if you're a business that wants to come in, and, you know, we've had businesses go in and out. Uh, how are you going to, you know, if they go to Mill Creek, they're, they're perfectly willing to pay whatever ransom they got to pay because they got the numbers, yeah. the traffic. The, we don't have it. Right. You know, when when you come to the east side, they, they said, oh, you know, we can't put a, I'll tell you what restaurant, they can't put an Applebee's there, but they can go one block over and force everybody from Erie to drive out to Harbor City. <coughs> right. Why can't we have it on our side of town? I, I agree. Maybe you have to say, you know what? I talked to a little guy the other day, my barber, and he brought up a good point. He'd like to invest, but why should I? He goes, my taxes are high. You know, I could go out right now to someplace else, and and, and you know, everything is better. Yeah. But you know, yeah, it's good for discussion. Well, Kaz, I believe we're off the air, and I'm pretty sure. No, no, we're still on, but we will be. Yeah, this is not a tape, though. Oh, okay. But listen, I want to thank you for having me, and thank you guys for coming in, too. So we appreciate the calls and everybody else that called today. And you know, everybody, I thought it was a pretty good show overall. So thanks for having me. And the debate is good, even though we don't agree all the time. No, you can't. Not everybody degree, agrees on everything. So it's always good to talk about stuff, though. So. Thanks for thanks for having me, Cass. And Mike, thanks for your help. Hit the tunes. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Online Show on Erie's own Government Access Channel Nine.